Devin George, of course, three-time NBA champion, selected in the first round, 23rd overall uh, by the Lakers in the 1999 draft, and was a and is a Minneapolis native. Right. Uh, and uh, is, has been long been associated with that city. Uh, Evan, we, I mean, excuse me, uh, Devin, we appreciate your time this morning. First of all, how are you doing? How is everybody? Um, everybody's good. We're all safe. Um, everybody's good. My um, the buildings and projects developments um, that are up and the ones that are um, under construction right now they're all safe. Um, uh, the people are, you know, really protecting and um, uh, watching after it and making sure things don't happen. But uh, my message to them is is it's there's more important things you know than the building. There's insurance and stuff. So if something happens, it is what it is. Make sure everyone be safe. Uh, Devin George, again, in Sacramento now, lives in both Sacramento and Minneapolis. But when the pandemic hit, couldn't get back to Minneapolis. Been in California since March. So I know you've obviously have talked to people back in Minneapolis where this, this particular incident all got started. What has been the, I, I guess, the most positive thing that if there is anything at this point that you have heard or seen? Um, the, the the most positive thing that I've seen is that really, I believe um, people that have been crying out for help, people that have been crying out um, for uh, to let people know the things that have been going on in these communities, I think people understand that it's real, that it's true, that those things really did happen. And I think they everyone's got, you know, they got everyone's attention. Um, I think that's the most po- that's one of the positive things. The other thing is that I'm seeing now is that there's more and more um, people that are in the system that weren't trusted as far as you know people in high po- places in the government or police officers are coming out supporting and saying what was done was wrong. I stand with you. That's not right. That's helping a little bit, but there's a lot there's a there's a long way to go. But I, I think I saw, I think it may have been the chief or someone in Flint that's there. And I saw some other mm-hmm. cops in New York. And that's helping the situation of people understanding this is what's going on. It was wrong. I'm not with it. Because before it's been, yes. hey, this is this guy that killed this this person. Hey, he's our brother. We wear blue. You know, we stand with him. We, you know, we're not with them. That's not what we do. And people are separating themselves. So. I think that's one of the positive things that I've been seeing at this. Yes, that that officer you were talking about in Flint, Michigan, took off his helmet, laid down his baton, and they all actually walked with the protesters together. Exactly. Talking to Devin George here with us about about that reaction that we've seen everywhere. And part of that has been certainly what people have seen now, some of the violence that stemmed from that. And I'm curious, Devin, as someone who's not only, you know, someone who's affected by this and the way an entire community is, but also you mentioned is a business owner, is someone who has pop property around there, has seen that stuff. How, How have you balanced what you've seen from this reaction and from this response? Well, I mean, it, it's tough because this is, to, it's a shock to some people. To me, it's not. Um, from being a person that has worked in the community, has my nonprofits there, I do affordable housing. Um, I'm constantly working with people in the community and people that are in it can see it coming a mile away. The reason why is there are so many hopeless people that have no hope no reason to look for tomorrow. All of us that live our lives, we have something to look forward to. Our kids are safe. Our kids are healthy. They're going to school. We have a kid, our kids game coming up on Saturday. They play basketball, they soccer, whatever it is. But you have so many people that just have nothing to look forward to tomorrow. And that's the dangerous thing is the system was creating more and more people that had nothing to look forward to. And that's what you see when you see the looting and you see the rioting and you see all the stuff that's going on and the people there, they don't have anything. Those aren't people that have a, a possible promotion on their job coming up next week or next month or a possible interview that they're going to be called in next week or whatever. Those are people that have nothing to lose. They've been sitting down the game of life. There's no hope. There's no way for me of winning. It's pushed against me. And then I'm stuck in this area with in a food desert no place to eat, 
no place to go, no transportation, no health care. And this is this is this is what you get. And those are dangerous people to deal with, people that have nothing to look forward to tomorrow. And the system creates more and more of those people. And that is why us as athletes or former or, or local heroes, when we come back, it gives the community some kind of hope because they know this guy doesn't have to be here. He's here. He's looking after me. He's helping my kids. He's mentoring this kid when they see us. And so that is what our job is to restore some hope. But sometimes it's just too much. As we're talking to Devin George, who, of course, has business in the Minneapolis area, is a Minneapolis native and also a former NBA player. I know you have three sons, and we heard from the North Carolina Central uh, basketball coach about how he coaches his players at times, not only in basketball, but literally he will put chairs on the floor of the gymnasium and try to coach them how to deal with being pulled over Uh, by a policeman and the things that you should and shouldn't do. How much of what we saw play out, how much do you talk about these with your sons all the time? It doesn't matter because, you know, the color of our skin, it's all the same. Even though we don't necessarily live in the area, it doesn't matter. On our end, there's just, if that person is racist or if they have an agenda, it doesn't matter if we're not committing a crime. It's just the color of our skin. It could be a jealous factor. You know, this, oh, hey, what are you driving this car for? What are you in this neighborhood for? Oh, you're resisting. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.